Okay, we are live. Hello, everybody. Let me hit my record button here um, on this. Uh, my name is Claude Diamond, and I love sales. I've written nine books on real estate. Uh, of those nine, four books are on sales. I call it the gut sales method. Great untraditional techniques of sales and success. I'm the former world's worst salesman. I freely admit it. Um, uh, now I, I wrote several books on it and I developed a, a sales system, three simple steps for learning to make you feel confident on the phone, not have to memorize scripts. Scripts don't work, by the way. Scripts are caca. Scripts are nonsense. You don't want to use scripts. Um, it, it's, it's just not worth your time and trouble. Um, you have to talk to somebody um, in a relaxed state. You have to be authoritative. You have to nurture that person, make it emotional. And you will find, uh, being the wor former world's worst salesperson, um, I was very fortunate. I met the world's greatest salesperson, and it made such a difference in my life. Um, I met a person who could make more money in one phone call with a prospect than I could make um, uh, uh, knocking on doors all day long. I mean, uh, that I could make, I had a, uh, I have a business degree, I have a doctorate in law uh, and um, yeah, I'm recovering, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> thank you, dear. My lovely wife just bought me coffee. Yeah. You know how you make a marriage last? Good coffee yeah, and a good wife who brings it to you. Thank you, see that? I complimented you, dear, in front of a cast of thousands. Hey, I, my, hey, I'm not a stupid guy. Listen, you got to go out there um, and learn sales from someone who has the right to teach it. Okay. Uh, the thing about sales is once you've mastered it, uh, you're free the rest of your life. My definition of freedom, I love talking about this. Um, my, definition, my definition of freedom is basically that um, I, my, I could, we could lose everything we've worked a lifetime for. Houses, we live in California, Colorado, North Carolina, spend time in Hawaii. Uh, cars, I like cars. Um, I lease them though. Uh, it makes more sense. And um, uh, assets, money, retirement fund, take everything away from me. God, Lord, keep me healthy and get me to this wonderful remote control device to the universe. And in 30 days or less, no, 21 days or less, I will be a one percenter. I will be a top wage earner. Can you imagine yourself saying that? To have that freedom, to know that you can make as much money as you want, even have setbacks and failures. How do you know a how do you know a person's a winner? They've had failures, they had setbacks, but it didn't stop them. It just told them what not to do, what to avoid. You got to make some mistakes in life. That's how you learn. It's common sense, right? Um, absolutely. Um, I'm going to check my system here because I thought some of my students were coming on. And look at that. Someone just came on. Let's see. If he, let's see. There he is. The legendary Justin Chamness. Uh, let's see if he clicks on here. Justin Chamness, the legendary superstar sale. That's not Justin. Who are you? You're Justin's father, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ed Klasky, how are you, young fella? Hi, Ed. How did you get? Uh, did you change your name to Justin, or how did no, you do that? I, I I was on his uh, on his Zoom uh, holding a, a little meeting before, and I guess it stuck on there. I'm not sure how. Wonderful. I'm glad you could join. Um, I'm doing a simul broadcast here, so thousands of people around the universe are watching us. No, probably. I wish, but uh, people are watching. I, I was just talking. Look at all these people coming on so quickly, all of a sudden. Yeah. That's great. And uh, no, hi uh, uh, no hiding, Wes Young. Tiba, turn on your videos there. And JC, what are you doing? Making your bed? Uh, what are you doing there? We see everything on camera. <laughs> Fixing um, the couch. Yeah. Good, I was just talking. good. Good to see. Good to see all of you. Oh, even Christina is is coming on here. Lovely Christina. OK, great. I was just rambling here to the audience. I was talking. Um, about I was the former world's worst salesperson. Um, I had a mentor. Uh, find yourself somebody. Try to be in, a, in an area of influence with somebody who's a great salesperson, who's really good, spontaneous, inventive. Uh, what is, what's the word the comedians use? Uh, uh, it's like spontaneous. What do they call it when they come up and people? Stand up. 
Stand-up comedians? Yeah, stand-up comedians. What do they call that? Improvisation. Can we, hi, Christina. Good to see you. No tequila. It's too early. Okay. <laughs> No tequila. Strict. I'm still on the coffee here. It's 11.05 in Winter Park, Colorado. It was actually, I think, 37 degrees this morning at five o'clock. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And it wore, and I just took a five mile run and it's warmed up to 65. It's a heat wave here. <laughs> it, it's amazing. We're going to do some role plays, have some fun. This is, uh, this is loosey goosey time. I'm an informal person. I like to have fun while learning. Uh, nobody wants anybody here. Have a, have a teacher who was a cure for insomnia. All you do is, oh, which one's this over? Oh. Does anyone have that board meeting or that teacher besides me? Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, is it? Is it been? Is it? Is it worse now? I wonder. Uh, is it worse now or is it better now? Worse. Like, really? Why is it worse? Uh. It. it I think it's just hard to sit and listen to people drown on in a monotone and just lecture at you and tell you the thing. And you've also like for me, now that I've grown up a bit more, I have expectations. Like if you're going to get up in front of us and speak, you need to engage. And, you know, so it's just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. What's the what's the key? What's the key to get? Are we in a business that are we in? Is really marketing getting people's attention? Is, if you had to use one word to describe marketing, it's attention, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How do we get somebody's attention in a world full of competition? There's so much. Is everybody here in real estate or uh, am I, uh, before, before I generalize in re real estate? Is What's more competitive than real estate? A, uh, we have agents, brokers. We have investors. We have gurus. Okay especially in Florida and California. Okay, they just grow them there like, like rows of corn or something like that. Um, the thing about it is, how do we get people's attention? I have an idea. I have I an idea. Ideas. I have an idea how you and I can make a lot of money together today. Real, really? Uh, who are you, sir? I'm sorry. Do we know each other? Well, I wanted to ask you a question because I, I saw a video you did like that. No, that stick, it, stick it. Yeah, that's good. Stick in the role play. But uh, but I, I kind of forgot the the after that. Okay, you, well, we'll we'll reverse. You were, you were calling a real a realtor. Oh, okay. We can do that. Uh, let's let's reverse the uh, let's reverse the role. Um, what was it you said again? Uh, what, what I have an idea about? how you and I can make a lot of money together. Sir, sir, Mr. Guzman, can I call you JC? I'm Claude. Hello, Claude. How you doing? How can I help you? Uh, yeah, I, I have an idea. I understand you have a problem. You have a property that fell out of escrow and you've been renewing it with what? Two, how many real estate agents have you renewed the agreement, the listing with? So far, two. Two. It, uh, that's got and people coming and kids spilling ice cream on your white carpeting and all that stuff. And the dog and the and one guy with five chihuahuas and the dogs pooped over by the refrigerator. Not fun, is it? Not at all. Not at all. I always throw. I always throw in chihuahuas. I don't know why. I don't even have a dog. But <laughs> there's something about those little yappers. There's so many of them in San Diego. Um, sir, I have an idea. I have a solution, maybe to your problem. You wouldn't want to hear it if it could help you solve the problem and get you out of this and get you the money you're looking for, would you? Of course, of course. What you What you got for me? Oh, thank you so much. You are the owner of the property on Avocado Lane, right? Yes, indeed. Oh, okay. So, and is there anyone else involved in the decision-making process? No, that's me. Okay. The one turn, that on that air, turn on that air conditioner. Are you warm? No, oh, I, I just came in from outside and it's real hot. Oh, okay. Turn that dial, baby. Life's short. Turn it up. Yes, sir. Life's too short to sweat. Uh, I'm but, <laughs> but, but, but when you did that pitch, because I saw the video, it was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. You were calling, a, a, the pitch was to a realtor. So you were basically oh. calling a realtor. Yeah. And using oh, that okay. line. We'll change. Hey, Mr. Realtor, Mr. Guzman, the realtor. Um, I have a, I have an idea. I have a solution. You haven't sold that property on, uh, on uh, chocolate ice cream lane, right? No, no. Not oh, yet. Okay. I love the name of that street, man. Cause I love ice cream. Um, I might have, my name's Claude Diamond. I, I got a great idea for you that might solve this problem and get you the commission and everything else you're looking for. You wouldn't want to hear it, would you? Of course. What can oh. we do? 
Do I have off the role play? Do I have his attention? Yeah. Did you notice, did anyone hear? I used a special technique. I'm giving you the hand signal here. Okay, what did, I, what did I do? Christina, you know the answer to this. You, you reversed it on him. Very good. I reverse. Why do I always do that reverse technique, Joseph? It brings attention and, uh, uh, and really would like to hear the answer. Yeah. Oh, oh you'd, re you'd really like to hear. See, you never know if I'm going to call on you. You, know, you always got to pay attention to these calls. <laughs> you, you, you can't be texting Helen while you're doing this. It's like in school. <laughs> I feel myself like in school. And oh, teacher you, can, can, can call right. for me. You're right. You're in school for only one purpose. I want to see you people make a lot more money, have a lot more fun in sales, and build your confidence so huge, you know, that... Um, that you, you just have more fun while going to the bank in this. The redirection is basically to get them a little off balance. They don't expect it. How many salespeople say, you don't really want to buy this car? You know, hey, Tiva, you don't want to, I know you're looking at this new Mercedes, but you got a brand new, you got a beautiful uh, Toyota uh, uh, pickup truck outside. Those are great. You don't really want to buy a new, this thing is a lot more money. You don't really want to buy a car today, do you? Well, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I came here. I want to but, get one. Well, well, I don't understand though. You, that Toyota, uh, how many miles you got on that little pickup truck? I got about 87,000. Oh, that thing will go to 187,000 without changing the oil. Those cars are fantastic. It is a nice truck. You're right. It, you're oh, right. you're right. I mean, and these, this is a luxury car that's about $120,000. I, I mean, I don't under help me out a little. Why are you looking at a car like this? You know, I, I don't know. I just, I really like the car. I like the way it looks. You know, what, can I ask you what business you're in? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I mean, no, I, I, I interrupted <laughs> you. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I, I do some, uh, I'm in IT and I do some real estate. Real estate. You don't ever have to meet with people, clients, customers, buyers, investors, realtors, lawyers. You don't have to meet with people though when you're doing investments and stuff. Oh, all the time. All the time. Do you, does anyone ever have a little snob? Are they a little snobby or um, what's the word? A little, a little sketchy when they when you when they see you driving a five year old pickup truck. Uh, they, I don't know. I don't really pay attention to them, but you know, good I mean, for you. good for you. Good. So why don't you just take, so you meet with them or you drive them around in the pickup truck, right? I mean, taking them in a beautiful car like this wouldn't make a statement about your success as an investor or a real estate person, right? Uh, you know, it, it would, I mean, it'd be nice to take my clients around in something really nice. Yeah. You know, uh, people may not say something to your face, but when they get into an older used pickup truck, do you think they make judgments, but maybe they're too polite to say anything? It's, yeah, it's possible. Christina's even nodding her head. I saw that. <laughs> Christina, you got, I love, you're so physical. I can read you. Your body language is so wonderful. You know, this is great. These are things to watch, by the way, when you're talking to people. When someone does this, or they're going like this, you know, or they're going... <laughs> When they do stuff, I'm very physical. If you guys watch me on the screen, I'm always nodding my head or moving closer, or going like this. I can't hear you. Um, is that, Does is that, that have to do with, with psychology, sir? Yeah. Some people have to demonstrate their physi physiology. I think that's a word. Maybe I made up a new, is that a new word? Did I make up something? Okay. The, they, they are, I'm very demonstrative. Uh, with my hands, with my body and stuff like that. You can read people sometimes. What am I doing? Back to that great Tiba. You're doing phenomenal. That's a great role play. What do you, you guys know what I was doing? Somebody explain to the group for the recording. What was Uncle Claude doing with Tiba before? Was I trying to, did I sound like I was trying to sell him a car? No. As a matter of fact, what, what, what I like about that technique that I've, I've been watching and learning from you is I'm selling I'm selling myself the car. Like you don't need to well, do anything. Say that again. That was brilliant. Say that I'm again. selling, I'm selling myself the car. I'm saying that I like the car. I'm saying that, you know, it, yeah, I have another truck, but 
I really want that car and it would make an impression for that. Like I'm saying all the things that you could say to me, but because I'm saying it, I'm selling myself on the car. You're not convincing me of anything. Yes. He's was I trying? It, Go ahead. I'm sorry. He's making it guilt-free and um, what was it? Remorse-free mm. from actually purchasing the, the car. What's our, what's our rule? I say it every time. What's our rule? The million dollar rule on emotions. People make emotional business decisions. Uh, and then people make, later. Yeah. People make immediate business decisions. Immediate is the operative word here. If you're underlined. This is the most important thing I teach you guys. If it's one thing after all these years, it's, it's the one thing you can remember. Emotional selling will make you rich. Okay. Most people do because of a lot of misinformation or they haven't studied the they haven't studied psychology or empathy they don't understand the prospect prospects uh, your competition is always giving numbers and square footage that remember we were talking about boring teachers in the beginning okay that stuff is boring oh well yes the bathroom is uh, a, uh, is 122 square feet and it comes uh, with uh, the most modern toilet made in Japan and is that really emotional selling no but if you tell somebody you know what this house is do you ever have problems yeah, yeah I understand you only had one bathroom in your other house can you imagine you you have a bathroom your wife has a bathroom the kids have their bathroom on the part of the house nobody when you have company there's another bathroom downstairs could you imagine having too many bathrooms have you ever had a problem waiting to go in and you're late for work or something like that and you need to brush your teeth and stuff can you ever can you imagine Boom. See how easy it is to make it more emotional. Can everyone relate to waiting, to not having enough bathrooms in a house? I, I can remember. <laughs> I lived in a house when my parents, uh, in uh, New York City, we had a, we had a one bedroom apartment um, and we all, all four of us, my brother and my parents, we shared one bathroom and sometimes there was a line. <laughs> you almost done in there? <laughs> emotional selling is the key. So how was I making Tebow emotional with that Mercedes? What was I trying to bring out of him? You were trying to bring out the, um, the best selling part. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to get him to justify. Seriously. If you were selling $120,000 cars and someone comes in with a five-year-old pickup truck, what, re what reasonably, OK, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being I can be very judgmental sometimes and I don't apologize for it. But can I reach a rational conclusion that someone who's driving a used pickup truck? Why are they looking at one hundred and twenty thousand dollar car? Is that unreasonable? No, Am I being judgmental, dear. <laughs> I know my wife just said I'm never judgmental. <laughs> OK, is that come on, guys, take a stand here. You can tell me I'm wrong. Jimmy, I mean, Gino, Jimmy yeah. Gino will agree with me. There's nothing wrong with getting an update. I mean, if you've been with something for five years, it's perfectly fine to, to look into something a little bit newer. Sure. As long as, you, as, long as you're not talking about your wife, yes. <laughs> 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 Who said? Tiva said that. Do you believe? <laughs> I want to speak to your wife. <laughs> <Not there>. yeah. <laughs> seriously though um that's a big financial commitment from a, mm -hmm. uh, a 15 twenty thousand dollar pickup truck to one hundred and twenty thousand dollar car i don't think that's unreasonable what's the first thing i have to qualify him on if i find out that he needs a he needs a a nicer car uh for a multitude of reasons uh vanity uh to show off to his customers how successfully is or to make impressions on people maybe he wants a safer car than a pickup truck for his customers mm -hmm. for his family or something um maybe that's his dream car and he just made a big sale i see we don't know do i have a right to find out you better believe it otherwise you're going to waste a lot of time what's the first thing we need to qualify him for money why why because that's so, the only way you're going to get the car okay so Tiba, qualify me for money. We're going to reverse this engine, okay? I'm in, I got the pickup truck now. 
and um, you're the sa- you're the Mercedes salesman, and um, I need a better I need a better car for my for my business because my customers are being a little snooty because I only drive a pickup truck. I love pickup trucks, by the way. <laughs> the, the only reason I don't drive a pickup truck anymore is because every weekend someone had to ha- someone asked me to help them move their move their stuff out of their apartment or house. <laughs> When you own a, tell me the truth. Who owns pickup trucks here? Okay. What do your friends and family do all the time when you have a pickup truck? Borrow it. Borrow it. Can you help me move? And you know, there goes your back, right? And and your and your Sunday off. So that's why I don't have a pick. Go ahead, Tiba. Uh, let's go ahead. You're the salesman now. All right. All right. Money, well, money qualification. Okay. <clears throat> so, all right. I I just want to help me understand here. So you've got the truck. And now you're looking at this beautiful Mercedes. Oh, here. I love it. This is the car I've always wanted. And, you know, sometimes people aren't impressed with me driving a five-year-old pickup truck. Oh, yeah, I can understand that. You know, I, people, are, people are so snobby and judgmental. You know, they really you know, can you be. Know? They really can be. I mean, do you so do you think if you were in this, though, I mean, you give me a little to... give me a little stroke there. Agree with me. Oh, yeah, I, you know, cer- certainly, yeah, people can be very judgmental that way. It's, you know, I can understand, man. I can understand that, that how, how that would happen. So help me understand, in, in terms of getting the Mercedes, are you thinking, you're not thinking about trading in the truck for the Mercedes, are you? Oh, or- no, I love, I love my truck, but I, I just had a really big sale, got a huge commission truck, and um, it's our, it's my, uh, it's our 25th uh, wedding anniversary, and my wife, would love uh, she, she would I'd love to surprise her with a new car which I she might let me borrow oh man that that well congratulations on the anniversary that's super Thanks. exciting good stroke yeah. smart <laughs> go, go deeper what's your ask me a personal gee what's the what's the, uh, how do you how what's your success story for being married that long yeah so I, what's hey let Make me it a little this. personal a little emotional be, be yeah, a cool. human being here Hey, okay, so you know what? I've I've been married here for about uh, going on twelve years here myself. That's I'm curious, great. what's your uh, what's your secret to getting the twenty five? Um, she had more money and better credit. Oh, <laughs> wise man, wise. I set, you, I set you up for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that statement, by the way. <laughs> yes, I, I would agree with that as well. <laughs> on that, seriously, if you are having a conversation. And you got a little personal. Gee, that's wonderful. You've been married that long, and uh, you know that's really uncommon. How? Uh, what could you share with me? Your success secret and everything. I'm, you know, boom, and 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 they share that, and maybe you make a joke or something. And get, are we do? Are we making ourselves? This is important. More attractive. Mm-hmm. How important is it to make yourself attractive to another person? Very important. Why? Why Jimmy Jean? It 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 get to it's, it it start with the trust. They be able to trust you, then they start to like you. How like, do you? What what is really? Let's have a def, What is really attraction? How do we get a stranger in a business or a social setting or in the supermarket? How do we get in maybe a few seconds make ourselves attractive to another person other than physically? Asking the right questions, making a person laugh. What kind of questions should we ask? Like cross-examine them, like a cop pulling you over, or, or what kind of questions? Open-ended. Like, uh, can you give me an example? What do you mean open-ended? You got some nice shoes. Oh, and what these, you these things? Oh, these, I got these. I got these at Costco. They're they're like they're fifteen dollars sneakers, man. Man, those shoes right there, man, I've been looking at those for a minute, and wow, I just couldn't find them. Where did you get those? Oh, Costco. Like I said, Costco, $15.99. They're really comfortable and everything like that. Um, You know, I play tennis in them and all that good stuff. You know, I could imagine. I've been, you know, I've been dreaming and thinking about them. I just couldn't find them. Now I know where to get them. Thank you a lot, Claude. Okay, boom, boom. Now go back into the sale. Okay, Tiba, go back into the sale. Uh, okay, where are we at? Uh, where so- you're qualifying me for money? We still have it, yeah. That. So, um, see these distractions that I these are my <laughs> fault, not yours. I, you know, you guys are so great, you always give me ideas 
about things we need that touch on and, and discuss. I know I go on tangents and stuff and, and stuff, but I think this is all important stuff in persuasion and everything. Go ahead, qualify so, me for money. All right. So it's an anniversary. You're thinking about getting this car for you just did the big. I city. love this car. Yeah, for my wife's anniversary. Okay, beautiful. Man, our she's anniversary. Gonna, I think that's going to be a great present for her. So, um, in, in terms of you know taking the car home today. Um, were you planning on, so you're not going to trade in the car. Are you going to use that money from the sale to help you do that? Or are you thinking finance? And what does that look like? Oh yeah. You? Yeah. We had a, I had a big commission. I just, uh, um, I just did a lease purchase on a home in Palm Springs and uh, really great commission. And uh, uh, you guys, you guys don't have financing, do you? I mean, I don't have to, I've never bought a, a new car before. Uh, how do you, is, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, we have, you know, we've got all types of financing options. Great. Just give me, a cook, give me a cookie first. Great question. Great, Thank great you, question. Why do, why do you ask? Um, because I, I, well, I, I mean, I don't have the whole 120,000. I, I, I've got about half that from a commission check. Okay. All right. Off the role play time out. What just happened? He's, he, he just said, that's great. And he asked a question. Why did you bring up the financing or whatever you said there? Yeah. Did, yeah, okay. you and what did and what did I give you for free? You just told me exactly where you you told me your number, where you're at, and where I need to be to get you to get you this car today. And in your mind, you're a professional Mercedes sales guy. You know you can finance this thing for if you get at least thirty thousand down. You know you can finance anyone. Yep. Okay, but you know I have sixty thousand now. What would the amateur guy do, knowing I have sixty thousand? Let's assume I have reasonable credit. What would the what's the amateur guy do all of a sudden? Anybody know? I'm trying to get trying to close. What? How are they going to act? How are they going to act, Jimmy? Excited. Excited. Yes. Did you ever meet a salesman, Joseph, who got excited when you said something, and all of a sudden you just saw a change? in their physicality and their, their eyes lit up and, and they're, you know, all of a sudden they're, and they're talking faster and faster and everything. What's going on, Joseph? All the time, all the time it happens. Stay away from them. I um, don't, <laughs> something, something's wrong here. There's nothing wrong. They're excited. Why? Because <laughs> they they're thinking, thinking about the money. They're yeah. thinking about the money. Why is everybody in business really? To make money today. Everybody wants to make money. Today, but, when, but if you now, what would the gut salesperson do, like Tiba was doing? What would what would Tiba do? Uh, he's a gut salesman. I just told him, "Well, go back in the role play, even better." Tiba, yeah, I have about sixty thousand. I only have half uh, on that, um, so I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. You got half. Okay. Um, he's struggling. Listen, he's doing it right. Yeah. So sixty. I mean, you think it'd be possible? For you to maybe come up a little bit more? Uh, all I have is the 60, and I didn't want to spend all of it. Do I need all of that down? That's scaring me, man. Well, you know, you know, I can understand that. It's, it, it, I think it, it definitely will help. So let me do this. Um, you've got the 60. So I, uh, let, me, let, me go grab, uh, let me go grab my manager. Um, and what we can do is I'll get some of your information. Um, we'll put it in the system and then we'll, you know, I'll come back with some options and see if we can make that 60 work. Does that sound good? That sounds good. Now off the role play. Okay. Close. I want you to close me now. Okay. That, you know, that's all nice and sweet what you said, but oh. do you have a magic moment right now? I do. I'm that pretty girl on the doorstep. You <laughs> took out, you had a great dinner, you were laughs, you had drinks and everything. And I close my eyes and tilt my head. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this this is going to take a lot of imagination. All right, okay. all right, Christina, don't laugh so hard. <laughs> okay, um, so are you going to kiss me, or are you going to say I'll come back in a week after I talk to my wife or manager or somebody? Right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Let me see you close me right now. You're close. You're you're this close. Okay. Just close your eyes. <laughs> close my eyes. Yeah. Okay. So, you, all right. So, uh, yeah, I, I certainly think we can make that 60 work. So let me do this. No, 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 you don't know yet, but I think we could make it work. Suppose, imagine for a moment. Can make it okay. Work. Ah, okay. And so. I'm going to ask my boss, he owes me a favor, but if I go to him and I beat him up, 
and you're, you're not ready to I, mean, I got you. you're not ready to push the button are you okay you're not okay struggle use the word imagine and raise a hypothetical to get a yes or no a answer from him a commitment this okay. is how you close this, this is our theme for today. How to close in the first meeting, the first phone call. How do we close people? We qualify. We set the agenda first. We qualify. Him. We know he has the money. We know he wants to surprise his wife. And you need a commitment before he goes shopping to a uh, uh, to Lexus or something or or something like that. You've got you've got a magic moment right now. Close me, Tiba. Okay. Like right now, right now. Right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. Um, I love this car, man, and I, and I have sixty thousand. If uh, you know, maybe maybe you guys could help me with some financing or something like that. Yeah. Um, okay. How, how about this? If if I'm gonna if I go talk to my manager, and we can and and, and imagine that we we could make that sixty work. Would you be would you be up for signing the papers today and, and, and driving away in this beautiful car to surprise your wife? Do the last sentence with a redirection, with a reverse. You wouldn't want to sign this okay. today. Drive you, away with it. You wouldn't want to do that and surprise your wife tonight at dinner, would you? You okay. almost perfect. Get okay. it one more time. All right. Almost perfect. Okay. You okay. So if we were able to to blah blah blah, you wouldn't want to drive away in this car today, take your wife out to dinner and totally surprise her, would you? Oh God, I can't. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to. If you can make this work with your manager, are you sure? I don't want to get you in trouble or anything. Uh, well, you know, he owes me a favor. So I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try and cash it in for you. Okay. Um, yeah. Get another commitment. Now we're back in the conversation. Okay. Get, right. re, re, recertify that commitment from me. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and try and cash it in for you. Okay. Do you, do you think if I do that, you would, you'd be able to You'd, you'd want to drive away with this car today? If you, yeah. If you can do that for me, if I can put 30000 down and you can arrange some kind of financing, not more than 1000 a month, uh, you've got a deal, man. I'm ready. Okay. Time out on real play. So we were at 60 before, but now you just dropped me down to 30 for your commitment. Yeah, it's called a counter. It's called a counter offer. <laughs> and remember what I said in the preamble. You can do it for 30. Okay. You want exactly. 60, but you know you can do it for 30. You know this. He doesn't know what you know. What do most salespeople do that screws up the wholesale? What do salespeople do? They want to keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Oh, keep. yeah, we can do it for 30. We can do whatever you want. And every, and what immediately is going through the prospect's mind when you're saying yes to everything, we can do whatever you want. You know, what what are they what's going through their head then? I probably could have given less. I could yeah, have got it for less. It for less. Mm -hmm. I should have asked for more. What happens when you say yes, when the salesman says yes too easily? What's the psychology there? You start regretting. Yep. Regret. Pull back. Is, isn't this human behavior? Don't we all feel this way? All Let me think about it. Let me think about it. This is just psych. You don't have to be a psychiatrist. <laughs> or read Freud or Jung, which I have. You don't have to be a genius to figure out human behavior. But if you do the right motions with the right words, just, and by the way, let's give Tiba a round of applause. That was a beautiful close, man. That nice. was, if you do, okay. And you do it with a little bit of finesse, a little savoir faire. While you're blending in that stroking and that nurturing a little bit. Oh, you're, what a nice, what a good husband. <laughs> Tiba, what a good husband you are, surprising your wife and your anniversary. Oh, can you imagine if you brought this car home tonight, you take her out for dinner and you surprise her with that new car, you park it in the driveway with a big red bow. I'll get a, maybe if we can do business today, I'm going to get a big red bow for you. Can you imagine, what do you think your, how do you think your wife would feel? You feel great. Oh, yeah. It'll be a nookie night, man. All oh, night. Yeah. One stop to the That's next. That's a one. really old expression, and I bet none of you young people know what that means. Oh no, I know. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> the thing about it is, when you're having those kind of positive conversations, you're getting information, you're getting you're getting commitment, and you're struggling a little. You know, I don't know if we can do it for thirty, Tiba. Oh man. And that's, you know, you get the Academy Award for doing stuff like this, or you get a good check, or you make a nice 
check. You get a lot of money. What is this? The stuff we're talking about here today. Could you see yourself using this, using some of these moves? Yeah, yes. I actually, um, I did it la uh, earlier this week um, and was actually able to get um, a seller to basically take a concession on, on basically payments that we're going to be making to him over the course of the, over the course of this loan. It was, it was wild. Wow. How long, and, but you closed him, you got a commitment. Got a commitment. Yes. It's all about, so do you have to go, I think for some reason, we think we have to go back and forth. Oh, let me send you some more information and let's talk on, uh, let's talk next Monday or something like that. And, yeah. and what happens when you push things out too far? They forget on. about you. What's they that? What's that, Christina? They forget about you. They forget about you or somebody else has a better deal. Mm -hmm. Or you say, ah, maybe I better not spend the money. Maybe I'll just keep the pickup truck for another five years or something. What mm -hmm. happens when you re when you lose that emotional moment? It is very hard to regain that moment or it's lost forever. How powerful are emotional moments, magic moments, I call them? How powerful are they in making spontaneous decisions? That is very powerful. Yeah. And you've only got a little window of time sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and after it's, and if you let, if you, you still have to justify it intellectually. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you get them emotionally to get in their head, yeah, you know, he's right. And I can afford this car and it, I'll make more sales and people won't thumb their nose up at me because I'm driving a pickup and um, you know, and my wife, I'll give it to my wife as an anniversary gift on top of that, and we'll have a safer car for the, for the baby, uh, you know, rather than the pickup truck we can, and everything. And so they've justified it emotionally. And now, and you've got, and if you qualify them and you've got a tentative commitment, then you can go into the intellectual part, the dollars and cents, why it makes, and all the other things. So it makes sense to them. And then you've closed them in the first meeting. But if you let them cool off, Oh, well, let's talk next week. Oh, let me send me some more information and all that stuff. You've just, you've just lost a paycheck. You've just lost a prospect. And speaking of nice prospects, Helen just joined us. <laughs> hey, everybody. I, I'm sorry. I see everything. <laughs> Claude, um, I listen in uh, you on YouTube. And oh, good. I good. And I realized that I have better credit than Joseph. And now I'm kind of. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I freely admit it. My wife had, my wife was a nurse. She, I was a law student. She was a nurse, an RN. She had, uh, she graduated cum laude from Columbia University, Ivy League. She was making a lot more money than me <laughs> at the time. And, um, you know, I was just a, uh, a law student, you know, and yeah, don't go to law school, by the way. It's, it's so much work. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's do, who's got a role play they want. Uh, so you see the use of, of talking to people in a different way, that nurturing, that redirection, those compliments, and then pushing them away a little bit. And then sometimes using your authority. You know, what happens when you get a prospect who's just saying silly stuff? It's nonsense. It doesn't make sense. What do you think? A, what do you think an amateur salesperson will do? They'll just think they'll just go along with it. Yeah. yeah. What, do you think gut, what do you think a gut salesperson? You're losing the sale. You've got a, you've got a dopey prospect They're Everything they're saying is wrong and everything. What should you do? And you, you've just about lost this prospect. Do you think it's time for a guts move? What's a guts move? Fire him. You can fire him, or can you use authority? Can you can you say, here's my favorite line. Mr. Guzman, um, I've made a decision here. Can I tell you the truth today, or should I, should I just uh, make you feel good and say goodbye? Let me hear it. You're making, you're making a tragic finance. Please, you promise you won't get mad at me? No. 
No, thank you. Because people sometimes get mad at me because I can't help it. I like to tell them the truth. You're probably making one of the greatest financial mistakes of your life. Did you know that? How so? Let me thank you for asking. Boom. Now, what am I doing again? I lost the guy. I, I, well, I did a little preamble then. And I'm, am I back in the selling mode again? Yes. yes. yes okay. Yes. Claude, I thought you was going to say you're probably making the stupidest decision. <laughs> I that's you really, gonna... that's, you know, that's <laughs> got to be careful here. That's a game. I thought that, you was going to say that. That's one of my lines. That's in one of my videos. And Mr. Hey, Mr. Gene, you're, you're a well-educated, good-looking, smart young man. Why are you making such a stupid mistake? What? What? You, you're not, I never you're heard in, that before. You're, you're in deep um, guacamole right now. You're, you know, sales is very dangerous sometimes. If you know you're absolutely going to lose the prospect, they're going to go to your competition, they're making a lot of mistakes, your product, your service, your, your property, your deal is much better. Have you got, what do you got to lose by being a little dangerous? Nothing. 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 What do you got to lose? Are all prospects right? Are all prospects? No. Are this? no. Is the sales per, what the, What's that expression? Help me out. The customer is always right. 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 Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, are they always right? No. 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 I've been wrong a lot of times, and the salesperson corrected me. And I thought, you know what? I didn't. I never thought about it from that approach. Thank you. Sales is dangerous. Do you want them, even if you don't make the sale, do you want to feel like you gave it 110%? Yeah. What yeah. happens? Go ahead, JC. Yeah, uh, I, I like that move better because you leave the doors open. What happens when we're manipulated by someone who asked us 20 questions? We answered all the questions. They say they'll think about it, send me more information and everything. And you didn't make you didn't make those dangerous moves. How do you how do you feel when you get like, off the phone or the meeting's over? Like crap. You feel bad, don't you? Yeah. You know, and then you, does anyone here ever beat themselves up? Why did I say that? Why didn't I do this or that? Right? Yeah. Do, do we beat ourselves up sometimes? Yeah. All the why? time. Why and why didn't? And then maybe we do the same thing all over again and again. Why do you think, what's wrong with us sometimes about not making those moves? What are we lacking? Confidence. Confidence. How, how intoxicate, intoxicating, someone help me, intoxicating? Intoxicating. How intoxicating is somebody who is confident and who cares for you at the same time? Very. Yeah. What do we, when we feel somebody is cares for us, empathy, and they're even willing to lose the sale, but we know they're speaking authoritatively, a professional. They know what they're talking about. What, what do you think happens to our disposition, the prospect's disposition? You seem Disarm. more trustworthy. Yeah. Disarm. Disarming. Is that that word? Uh, what's that one word I love? Rapport. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a French word. What, is, what does rapport mean? Creating a relationship. Yeah. Likeability and trust. trust. Yeah. You ever meet somebody at a party or somewhere <laughs> and instantly you like that person? Yeah. They listen. They paid attention. Uh, you found something in common. They had a great sense of humor. They laughed at your bad jokes. And you, you just had an instant connection with that person. How important is that in your success in business to have those skills? Very, very important. Where do we get them from? Practice. Practice. <laughs> Say that word loud again, Tiba. Practice. Practice, practice, baby. People. We practice all the time. And we think about before we react uh, with the, the wrong response, we sometimes take a breath. And say, say my favorite three words. I don't know. I don't know. Ask me, somebody ask me a question. Another role play. Joseph and Helen, ask me a question. Uh, what would you suggest to that realtor from the beginning of conversation? 
what would I say to a realtor? Yeah, so you, uh, I'm just like I jumping a little bit. I don't know. That's a great question. I, I, I mean, a brand new realtor or somebody you know already, or you're kind of, uh, help me out here. I'm not sure if I understand. It's overall play. You started with conversation to uh, with realtor. That you called realtor and I have great solution for you. And, right. But you never end it. And I, I'm very wondering what you what would you suggest? If I what I would say, okay. Oh, he's talking about what, when I said um uh when, when you call the realtor and you say uh I have an idea on how we can make a lot of money together. That's a good one. That's a good one. What's another one you could say to a realtor? But what is the idea? No, it's just opening. Yeah, that, that's yeah. That, that was my question to, to you, Claude, uh, because I saw it on a video, and you, that's how you started it out. You said, uh, "I have an idea on how you and I can make a lot of money together." Yeah, yeah. Put, Is that, yeah, uh, Mr. Guzman, can I call you JC? I'm Claude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How okay. you doing? Boom, boom. Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. So, you know what? Uh, I got to walk the five chihuahuas. You know, I'm not. So, <laughs> not so, um, it's uh, the thing about it is. Um, opening up with something like that and then going, you know, I understand I was, I was looking, um, somebody told me, or I saw online, you, you have a listing for a property on, um, uh, French, uh, French Rose Drive. Um, well, I just had a flashback because you said, uh, you have a property on, um, <laughs> on, on main street or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Was, and that must be gone by now. Right. No, it's still available. Would you like to, would you, I, 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 can I ask you a few quick questions and I'd like to make you an offer and see how we could do business and both of us make money. Could I, could I, could I just do that? And if we can move forward, great. If not, I'll get lost. Let me hear it. Okay. Boom. What do we call that step? Sorry. Agenda. 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 So what did I do? The first part was a pattern interrupt. How do most people call up someone? Hi, Joseph and Helen. How are you today? Good, good. Oh, that's wonderful. Listen, I'm just reaching out to you today. You know what are what's going through your head right away? Oh, there again, another one. Oh, there another comes. one of those guys, right? Right away. I've totally diminished Sons of Titanic right away without an iceberg. Okay. Lada, I've got a I've got a question that's somewhat <clears throat> somewhat related to what you're talking about earlier. So you were saying we need to be the authority in the conversation at times to help the help the client, sure. you know, help sure. our prospect get there. Um, one of the things that I've been running into on the phone is our prospects, particularly with real estate, are not up to date with what's happening in the market. So perfect example, I'm on the phone with a guy yesterday, you know, he's got a property he wants to sell. Um, and I know the area that his house is located in, it's it's starting to feel the crunch of interest rates going up uh, because he's kind of on the fringe part of, of a, you know, a metro, a metro area. And so I say it and he's like, oh yeah, no, blah, blah, blah. And so it's like, it's like, no, I, I, you know, like asserting that authority of like, I've done the research. I know what's happening in the market. Your, like your opinion's not correct. Like, obviously I don't want to say that to him, but you know, I'm also the mindset, like a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. Right. So like, how do I get him to realize you're wrong? Um, ring, ring. Hello, Tiba. Yep. Did you hear what happened? What's that? The interest rate. The interest rates have gone up so high, and they might be going up again in August. And the listings are going from thirty days to one hundred and twenty days. Have you heard all about this? Uh, I thought I caught something on the news, but you know, those news guys, they just, they say whatever. And the agents say whatever, just so they can sell. You suppose I could show you the documentation that uh, I, I could show it to you that the listings, you have a property for sale. You're not in any rush to sell it though, right? If it's, if it's your own home. So if you stay in there another six, 12, 18 months, it's not an issue, is it? Well, I mean, I own it free and clear. So, you know, I just fired oh. my agent not too long ago and okay. it's free and clear. So, okay. Boom. Um, let me get your opinion. You can go into, can I have your opinion? Can I get your mm. opinion on something? Or could you, uh, Christina and I were just having a little debate. Could you, uh, could you settle it for us? Oh, I like that. Third party. Okay. And 
sometimes what you have to do sometimes is you know just get you got to get them to a revelation an epiphany mm. or something like that and if they're still being a hard head an illogical hard head you know then you have to maybe uh, you have to you see you got to find it if the motivation on a one through ten you know my little guts barometer ten means it's urgent they're motivated five means they're kind of sitting on the fence and one two or three means there's nothing emotionally there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to find a need, create a need, or exacerbate an existing need. If there is no need, there's no greed. If you can't, you got to find a way to make them have a, what we what Oprah would call an aha moment. I think that's a quote from Oprah, by the way. She's the inventor of the aha moment. God. You know, um, I noticed, I'm, you know, I've been listening to Oprah. She know how to make the person that she's speaking to get so emotional just based off of the questions. Yeah. What did she do? Um, uh, what did she do to Tom Cruise? What, uh, who remembers that famous thing? He got a lot. What, what did she do to, to Tom Cruise? And he reacted really emotional. What did he do? Who remembers that? I don't. He he she he got him. Uh, he stand up on the couch. He got him to jump up and down on the couch. Okay, he no. looked like a sick. He looked like a kid in kindergarten. He was jumping. And anyway, I think he was talking about his new marriage to um, their divorce to the Australian Australian lady. What's her name? Kidman. Kidman. Nicole Kidman. They call Kidman. Very good, Joseph. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> good trivia question. After the divorce. After Nicole Kidman divorced Tom Cruise, what was the first thing she said? Really, she really said this. She said, now I can wear high heels again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. She's a tall woman. She's a tall woman, and Tom is not that big. <laughs> I thought that was a great line. <laughs> um, yeah, because Claude, because I'm just sitting here listening. You know, like you make when it comes on the cell, you get them emotional and see, can you close? And I'm listening to and I listen to her name. What's her name again? That she know how to get you emotional and then get she Oprah. know where. To, yeah, Oprah. She she's knows great. from start. Why, to why do you think she's so successful? Because she gets people. She she's able to bring out to get people talking. She's Correct. an interviewer, basically. She's a very good interviewer. Mm -hmm. Correct. And she knows how to ask questions uh, with and, and get people and get people talking. They just that like was, us when we on the phone with the seller, we ask the right question and just have them talking. Yeah. Why is it important? That's a good point. Why traditionally the salesperson does most of the talking? Why is it so important to get the prospect talking more? Get them emotional. It gets them more emotional, exactly. It gets them involved. They're a participant. You know, who, how many of us have been in the, we, back to school again, how many of us have been in a lecture hall and, and it just, you know, and you fell asleep? What happens when you call, what happens when I call on you and you're not expecting it, JC? You don't know. <laughs> oh, shit, he called me. <laughs> it happens to me a lot of times. It happens to me all the time. I daydream. It's part of, you know, I, if, you, if you can't keep my attention, you know, we've been talking about marketing. What's the, what's the biggest, uh, I've talked about this on Monday and last Saturday and everything. Why are uh, TikTok and Instagram and YouTube shorts, why are these short videos so, are, why are they so popular now? Uh, people attention span is um, short. So yeah. that's why you make these short videos just to get to the point. They want instant gratification. They mm -hmm. want to see something that makes them interested or, or curious or makes them laugh. Correct. And then they hopefully stay on that one short video and, and hit the subscribe button and then watch all the previous and then watch all the previous ones, right? And even then you have like maybe 30 seconds to get someone's attention. You, won't, you, you don't have much. Do we do we even have 30 seconds on a phone call to a no. call? How much time? How much time do we have before someone says, oh, it's another salesperson? Take me off your list. Like it's probably like eight. Yeah. 
So why do most people do the same old thing with 100% rejection? That's once again, my favorite other word. Insanity. Insanity. Why do something over and over again? It doesn't work. And the gurus still tell you, well, knock on a hundred doors, you know, and if a hundred people say no, knock on another hundred. Like you, like you have a character flaw. You don't, you just have common sense because nobody wants that much rejection. So you better change the way you're communicating with people. Mm-hmm. You better do something crazy, something outrageous, something unexpected. You know, something is something in, what was the word we used, JC, to, uh, the comedian word, improvisational? Yeah. Improv. Yeah. Can we be improvisational with people and do, so, how, how many people, do we have a lot of filters in our head? Well, you better not say that, Claude. And then, you know, yeah. and you, you want to say it, but you don't say it. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't say what I was thinking. <laughs> you know, the trouble is I usually say it and get into trouble, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you ever see somebody behave badly on a plane? Or have, 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 oh, did anyone ever go on an airplane with the mother and father who have the screaming children and won't do anything about it? Yeah. Oh, don't man. you want to, why don't you do something? Why don't you yeah. give them a coloring, a crayons in the coloring book? Give them drugs. Why are you letting 300 people <laughs> listen to your children? I don't say it, but, I'm, but I want you so badly. <laughs> Has anyone been on that flight from hell? No. Am I the only one who's been on a flight with kids screaming for four hours? Four hours. No. And the no. flight attendants don't do anything, you know, because they're busy serving drinks and stuff. <laughs> don't you want to say something to those parents? I had a worse one. One time I was in a bus from, from New York to Virginia, and, the, and it was like at nighttime, and the guy was snoring like the whole way. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> you know what everybody you- the whole bus was mad, like. And nobody wanted to say nothing. It was crazy. Yeah, you, you, ac- you accidentally bump into that person or push their chair and they, what, what? Yeah, and they wake up. Wait, it was we, got time, we got time for one more role play. Who's got, a, who's got something that's been, they wanted to uh, role play with? A stall, an objection, a situation. Go ahead. How about my guys who are Wes Young and Anthony who are, and Ed Klasky? You, you cowards, you're hiding. Come on the screen like these other brave people. See, I get into trouble. Come on, turn on your video. Who's got a Who's got a role play they'd like to do? Seriously, I'm at work. Coward. So, <laughs> so what? They They need you more than they you need them, Anthony. Show them who's the boss. <laughs> Come on. I'm happy to be listening in at this point. Anthony, we're gonna fire you. You turned on your Zoom video. How dare you? Damn it. Cool. So real quick, I have a question. Uh, so what are your top um? Social media. I know you got Facebook, um, YouTube, Shorts. What other ones do you recommend? Um, the beautiful thing about I start with YouTube as my foundation. Great question, Anthony. Thank you. See, I JC. I, see, I practice. JC. AC. It's JC that's talking. Oh, okay. I can't see. It says Anthony. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. Um, I use uh, JC. I use. Um, uh, YouTube as a platform, as a foundation. Mm-hmm. And I can do I can do 60 minute, a five minute, two minute or 30, 15 second video on YouTube shorts. And after you do and you can in uh, the, the beauty of YouTube is it's owned by Google, uh, Google. It's owned by the biggest, largest Internet company in the world. Um, and from there, they have a button called share. And so you can create a non native video and you you can create a a, a native um, organic video is the terminology in YouTube. Okay, or you can create it in I create my videos in zoom because the uh, camera and the um, and the adjustments the edits are much better in zoom and then I upload it to YouTube and then from YouTube, I can click on LinkedIn you hit the share button LinkedIn uh, Facebook Twitter blogger all the other social media, it takes seconds. You just click on all the other social media you belong to. So one video can be, you can des- you can shoot it out to 15 other social medias at the same time. Okay, that's getting okay. some, some of them you have to, if some of them like Instagram or TikTok, 
you have uh, if you have a short you have to manually upload them that's why mm-hmm. i do them se- that's why i do them separately in zoom so then i can go to instagram or tiktok and manually upload them in those things and um most of the time uh it's getting so that the i uh, i do a lot of my editing on my laptop i have a macbook pro but a lot of a lot of these videos um you have to utilize the iphone um application most of these um uh, uh, social media pages are really set up for iphone they're much more productive and fluid on an iphone so you also use uh tiktok for marketing I'm getting, I'm using, I'm starting to use TikTok and Instagram even more because I have the video already. If I do it, a dedicated video on Zoom, then I can upload it to YouTube. I can put it in all the regular social media that's connected to Google or YouTube. And then I can take that so, a short um, a video. It's in an MV, MV4, I think it's called. MP4. Uh, format. Thank you, Joseph. And um And then I can upload it to other, uh, uh, what's it called? There's another video, uh, Vimeo. I can do it to Vimeo and all the other social media. One video, and I can spread it out everywhere. You want to make sure it's entertaining, it's contemporary, it's compelling. You got to have a great title. Uh, You want to embed some text in there, which you can do very easily on YouTube Shorts. I talked about that on our Monday training call. You can put in your link or your name and phone number, or an, uh, a call to action, right in the video shorts on uh, YouTube. YouTube shorts, it, it took me a while to learn it, but it was worth it because I'm getting business, I'm getting new prospects and customers because uh, people like short videos now. Mm-hmm. You have, Christina, have you had some experience with the uh, YouTube shorts or any um, of those? Well, or- well um, my partner is the one who sometimes does videos for um for justin so okay yeah that's great that's great um so did that answer your question jc yes sir okay thank you we are out of time boys and girls that was fun that was that's always the fast hour isn't it it is is. okay what's everybody going to do today make more calls what what's that? create shorts? Okay. It's an our plan for today. Is Joe I got a feeling Joseph's gonna take a nap. It's three o'clock over there. Tell truth or truth or not. It's two o'clock. Two oh it's two o'clock. You're right. I'm not in California. I can always get confused with the time zones. As long as you as long as you mix North and South Carolina, so time is not nothing for you. It it it, it really it really is. The day's so long. I love I love summer. I love especially oh. Especially here, it's really cool. I'm 10,000 feet up. You need an extra blanket at night here, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah, it's, and, then you wake, and then you wake up and it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's blue sky, it's Colorado. It's, um, who's been to Colorado before we leave? A lot of people are moving to Colorado, Idaho, my, uh, Wyoming, Montana. There's a big population explosion in some of these Western states right now. Why are people why are people moving from the cities to more rural areas? They, they like, like to that. grow chickens. They like to grow chickens. <laughs> I would my homeowner association wouldn't let me, but I'd love I'd love to have a couple of chickens and fresh eggs every day. Yeah. You I'd have be- HOA? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Does all Colorado have that? It, or uh, when, uh, in uh, I'm in a housing development. Oh. With everybody's got, it, they're like little mini ranchettes, okay. And they, yeah, there's some HOA stuff uh, here. You know, it's very low. The homeowner fees are a hundred dollars a year. Oh wow! Uh, it's nothing. Do you know what we pay in California? <laughs> an arm and a leg. We pay, we pay five hundred dollars a month in California, and that's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But you, you like having you like having some rules because anybody here ever have a neighbor who's got cars that are not running on their lawn or dogs barking all night long? You like to have some rules in, mm-hmm. a, in, a, in an upscale community. Absolutely. I got to go, kids. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. All of you. Great Thank session. you, Claude. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.